Well, good morning, all ye saints of the Lord. And if you're not a saint, hopefully by the end of the day, or you will decide to be one, right? Either a saint or you ain't. And my wife doesn't like when I use the word ain't, but in that sense, I like that. Um, anyway, it's good to have Maureen back and hear the piano accompaniment. Um, and uh, welcome to Breen. Uh, <laughs> What's the name again? I know. I, yeah, I need to have a mirror. But anyway, welcome to Grace Bible Church in beautiful Beloit, Wisconsin. And I'm glad to be in Wisconsin today. And let's uh, open in a word of prayer. Father, we are thankful um, that we can gather together in your name. And I thank you for all the saints here today. And we pray that people watching online, if someone's not sure that they have put their trust totally in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, paying for their sins on the cross of Calvary, that they would do that today and not wait another moment. And we thank you for our time together around the word and around our singing songs of praise. In Christ's name, amen. And we have some announcements. Um, now, of course, next week, Sunday school, again, will be 945. And the morning service, again, will begin at 11, followed by a potluck preceding the semi-annual congregational meeting. Each family is asked to bring a hot dish and a salad or a dessert. Drinks and table service will be provided. And then after that, there's going to be a congregational meeting, and members will, be, will have a vote. And the ballot for the Board of Elders are Josh Angler, Jim Plummer, and Michael Paulson. And for Deaconess, Sarah Paulson. Um, and then there's the church cleaning schedule, 2023 on the bulletin board, so sign up if you can help in that way. Um, and I guess that's it. Anybody else have an announcement? Michelle, did I cover everything? <laughs> I was <laughs> She's my backup there. I... Yes. Yeah, Whitney came home on Wednesday night. Yeah, I saw that in Lita's little, um, little email. That was awesome. We're, what a wonderful testimony. How, 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 how big was she when she was born again? Three pounds, two ounces. Three pounds, two ounces. Six pounds, 15 ounces. <sighs> wow. Today, she was two months. Oh, Whew. Praise the Lord. That's exciting. That's really exciting. Thanks for sharing that. Um. Okay, well, let's uh, open up with our first hymn here. We're going to do number 102 and 103 back to back. There's something about that name, and blessed be the name. You would all stand, please. Yes. 
blessed, blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. First three to last. His name shall be the Counselor, the mighty Prince of is going to come up and read the verse scripture reading today. Ephesians 3 verses 1 through 9. Thanks, Lita. Good morning. The scripture reading is from Ephesians 3, 9, it's 3, 1 through 9. And we've read this before, but it's it's apropos for every day. So, (laughs) for this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that i should preach among the gentiles the unsearchable riches of christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in god who created all things by jesus christ May God add his blessing to the reading of the scripture. Thank you, Lita. All right, for our prayers today, do we have any praises? We obviously have Whitney's praise for today. Any other praises we'd like to share? I know I have a pr- Oh, Lita. praise. Thank God. Amen. Ashiri Ross is the daughter of Steve and Judy Ross. She's uh, hospitalized. She's got a daily murder. And I'm just really there. Tom was mentioning Sherry Ross. 
she's in the hospital. She's failing. Failing what? Liver? Her liver's failing. <laughs> failing liver. So keep her in prayer. prognosis isn't good uh, I do have a praise uh, I earlier this week I was looking at some classes that uh, to take at BBI and one of the classes I saw was uh, biblical principles of marriage so I asked my wife I said what do you think you want to take a class with me and she said yes so we'll, we'll both be taking uh, biblical principles of marriage and uh, hopefully that'll be a, a blessing blessing for us and uh, for our families Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's offer, uh, offer our requests up to our Lord. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for another day of your grace. Thank you for that message that we can, we can hold on to and that we can uh, treasure, that we can cherish, that is, is sufficient for all things, Father, in suffering uh, and in praise as well, Father. Uh, we think of, you know, we think of the Turnrose family. We, can, we keep them in prayers. We lift them up to you, Father. We think of, of Lita's nephew, Corey. We lift him up to you, Father, and we're mindful of him, and we keep him in our prayers as well. And her cousin, Kathy, who it sounds like she's doing better, but she still is in the hospital. She still is in ICU, Father. So uh, we're thankful for that, for that uh, small blessing, Father. But again, we keep her in prayers. We lift her up to you, Father. Uh, we, we think of uh, Sherry Ross, who's hospitalized. The prognosis is not good. She's having uh, a failing liver, Father, and we just we pray that, that you comfort her. We pray that you give her hope. I hope she has that hope that we can have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, again, but while she's here, Father, we just we lift her up to you, Father, and we just pray your will be done. You are sovereign, Lord. You are sovereign, God, Father. And uh, we just pray that your will be done. <clears throat> we pray for those unspoken prayers. Those that we may not be able to say out loud, but we keep to ourselves. But we pray to you, Father. We think of those prayers, and uh, we're just mindful of them. Uh, we're we're thankful of. Uh, we praise you, Father, for Whitney and just the wonderful transformation that she can. She's been growing, and that she can go home. She can be home. How precious that is uh, that they can be home, in a, in their home environment, in their own beds, in their own cribs, in their own own. Uh, just to, to be able to be together and not have to be in the hustle and bustle of a hospital and the, just the going back and forth of, of all the hospital personnel. And we're just so thankful for those who are at the hospital helping. You know, we, we're thankful for them. We praise, give praise to you for them, Father. Without them, you know, we, we just don't know. But we're just so thankful for all those who are involved in her process of, of growing and, and uh, becoming stronger, Father. And we're just thankful uh, for, for, for that prayer being answered. <clears throat> Thankful for our missionaries. We pray for them uh, who are out there uh, specifically. We just want to praise you for, for, for the good news for Dean and Sheba. Their visas were approved. And uh, they just pray for, for health and uh, traveling mercies, Father. And uh, they have a tremendous uh, uh, mission, missionary, and, and just a tremendous ministry that they have, Father. Though that family is, is door kickers. And we're just thankful for them and uh, for all the work that they do do. And we just want to give thanks. We want to offer praise. And we lift all these prayers up and give thanks to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, we're going to... Do number 175 in our hymnals. Hallelujah, what a Savior. We're going to do all five verses too. You can all stand, please. Number 175. Bearing shame and scoffing rude. 
Hallelujah, what a Savior, amen. Just so happens that that's what we'll be talking about today, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and what it means to know Him, or how we can know Him. That's the title of today's message, To Know Christ, after Paul got done reminding the Corinthians in chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians of, of how they are saints and how they are in Christ. In chapter 2, he goes on to say, in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 2, For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. He wanted these Corinthian believers in this body of believers to, you know, as they learned what liberty was and what grace was and how they should live it in their lives, that they should, you know, first of all, know Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, you guys all know I, 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 I will uh, always say this, that words matter. Uh, so let's look at what the word know means. Let's look at what the definition of know is. It's to understand clearly, to be informed of, to be taught to have a clear and certain perception of truth or fact. That is what it means to know. Let's uh, contrast that with Romans 10.2. Paul speaking to his brothers, his, his brothers uh, in Israel. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. We can know Christ. We can, after we get saved, you know, we can be in, in, in the body of Christ. We can know Christ, but we can potentially not know him according to knowledge. We don't know what his will is. We don't know what his word has to teach us. You know, we, it may hamper or dampen our ministries. So let's just take a look. To know Christ, Paul talks about in Philippians 3.8. He says, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. He talks about, about all these uh, previous things that he has done and that he has accomplished. And he, he talks about how all those things that he spent all this time doing in his life, he, it was a loss because he spent more time doing these things instead of no, uh, getting to know Christ. And in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20, uh, this is Paul speaking to the church about the Gentiles. He says, But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. We can learn who Christ is. We can be taught who Christ is. But we need to know that knowledge according to the revelation of the mystery, Ephesians 3, 4. Lita just recently read that, but let's take a look at verse 4 in Ephesians chapter 3. Whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Words mean something. Words matter. We can read, we can understand, and when you have understanding, you have knowledge, and what is that knowledge in? It's the mystery of Christ. We can know who he is, we can know what he did, we can know what is the pattern. I listed some references there, we're going to, uh, uh, for, your, for, your, for your benefit, I'm not going to read through them all, but who he is, Acts chapter 9, we look at Acts chapter 9, and that's... Paul on his way to Damascus, 
And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. He ascended Lord Jesus Christ, spoke to him from heaven. We know Christ. Uh, we, we know Christ not after the flesh, 2 Corinthians 5 to 16, which I uh, didn't quote so well a few weeks ago. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 16. Wherefore, henceforth, wherefore, for this reason, henceforth, from now on, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Now we can know what he did, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4 died on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day. We can know what his pattern is. 1 Timothy 1.16 Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to show them which would hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. We, we need to learn and we need to know Christ by learning mystery doctrine. We talked about that last week, understanding what dispensations are, understanding what right division is, understanding what our position you know, in Acts is, and knowing, and, uh, and knowing Christ according to pro prophecy versus mystery. <clears throat> so with all that being said, how do we know Christ? Well, the first thing we need to, to do, and it's the beginning of the year, so I always like to like to talk about these these types of topics. Is to know your know your motivation. I'm reading a book right now. It's called The Resolution for Men, and it's making me understand and it's helping to me re, helping me realize that in my life, you know, and probably the majority of all of our lives, that we spend a lot of time on temporal things. And and if you, if you ask me to define what vain is. I, I would define vanity or, or being doing something in vain as something that has no eternal value. And part of that has to do with is, is what's a matter of our priorities? Is our priorities focused mainly on things that have no earthly, uh, things of earthly value or things that have spiritual value? In Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19, his Sermon on the Mount. It says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You know, where are our priorities? Yes, we have earthly vocations. We all have jobs. We all have families. We all have children, most of us. We all have responsibilities. We have bills to pay. And we have responsibilities to our families, to our spouses, to our jobs. And we need things. We need physical things. We need all of those things. But where are our priorities? Where do our priorities lie? Are they on things of earthly value or things that have eternal spiritual value? So knowing our motivation, where are our hearts? I, I, I don't have time for that. Well, stop. You know, where is your heart lying right now when you, when you say that? And, and going through this book and reading it, it's, it's a slow and arduous process, uh, but I highly recommend it for any man out there who is, uh, has a family, has a wife, and is a husband uh, to read that. It's written by the, uh, the, those two brothers, the, Kendrick, the Kendricks brothers uh, that have the movies out, Courageous. Um, if you guys have heard of that movie, it's a really good book. But part of, part of that motivation is as, as we've made a, clear, made a conscious decision to, to want to, to know more about Christ and who he is. And, and part, of that, part of that process is, is as we read our Bibles, as we study our Bibles, to have, just have Bible belief. You know, believe the words on the page. Come, come at it with a, with, a, with a mindset that there's something in this book that needs to be taught to me. And it's not my job to, to, to try to, to uh, teach it so to speak. And having Bible literacy, part of um, you know, Christianity today is, is extremely Bible illiterate. They do not read the word, they do not study the word, they don't meditate upon the word. I can talk about uh, some numbers and percentages. Uh, but I think we all understand that, that the, the literacy of our Bible is, is at an all-time low. And, and how can we speak to other people? How can we minister to other people if they have questions, if we're not literate in God's word? 
part of that motivation is that we know and understand that we need to learn it. Let's look at for 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Where's the power of God found? In his word, in the gospel. Not in the wisdom of men. We can learn it, we can use it, and we can teach it. Let's go to 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Now this verse is found in uh, 2 Timothy, one of the pastoral epistles. But I would uh, like to say that I think this is absolutely applicable to anybody that is outside of being a pastor. Let me, let me pose a question. Let me have us think for a moment. We look at this mess outside of these walls in this world today, and you know, some of the things that you might hear, or you might say, or you might th think is that, you know, why are we here? Why are we at where we're at today? It's because they, they, they quit teaching God. They took God out of the schools, right? It could be a potential problem. Let's follow that logical train of thought. And I would propose that not only did they stop teaching God in schools, but we've stopped teaching God in our families. Men, how do you know how to be a man? According to God's word. It's in his word. How do you learn that? You have to read it. You have to study it, and you have to apply it in your lives. Men, how do you know how to be a husband? From God's word. How do you know how to love your wife? How do you know how to protect your wife? How do you know how to care for your wife? How do you know how to nurture your wife? How do you know how that relationship works? From God's word. How do you learn that? You have to read it. You have to understand it. You have to apply it. The same goes for uh, uh, women. You know, how do you know how to be a wife? What does God's word have to teach us about being a wife? We learn it. We use it, we apply it, we teach it, and most importantly of all, for our children. And I say this in Bible studies, and you'll occasionally hear me up here say this, but you can read God's word, you can understand it, you can teach it, because if you can't, how are you going to teach your kids? Are you going to let Sunday school teach your kids? Is it the Sunday school's responsibility to teach your kids? Is it the school's responsibility to teach your children about God and how to respond and how to act and how to be obedient? No. It's the parents. It's the fathers. And it's the mothers. You have to be able to read God's word. You have to be able to understand it. You have to know it. You, be able to, you have to be able to teach it. So you can teach God's word. We can't all teach it. We can, obviously, we teach it on different levels. But the ministry starts with yourself. It flows out to your spouse. And then it goes to your kids. Learn it, use it, teach it. Know your motivation. Know your tools. Our primary tool is prayer and the Bible. On the outline, I also put, you know, a dictionary is good. Words, words matter. Having a concordance and, and using uh, software, Bible software, eSword, the word. You could, that's subjective. I, I consider it primary in my toolkit. I use all four of, four of those. Prayer, always pray. As you approach God's word, pray that you have the right heart and the right mind and the right attitude. Say, God, teach me. Help me learn it so I can be a better husband. Father, teach me so I can be a better uh, husband to my wife, father to my children, uh, minister to those who need to be ministered to. It always starts with prayer, and then we open up the book, and then we study it, and then we see words that we don't understand. We use a dictionary. And then uh, compare scripture with scripture. We'll talk about that shortly. And then software just makes it so much easier. Secondary tool that we can use to know Christ. Study Bible. Bible dictionary. Uh, these are all uh, supplementary uh, commentaries. But just understand when we read commentaries that those are always biased to the author's understanding of doctrine and scripture. But it can definitely be a secondary uh, tool as we study God's word. And then know the procedure as we approach God's word. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Read it, and then reread it. Things will become more familiar to you, and you will know where to go. 
compare Scripture with Scripture. Most Feldick is well known for saying to, to compare Scripture with Scripture, 1 Corinthians 2.13. says, which things also we speak, not in the words of which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Compare scripture with scripture. And then determine the context as we open our books and we study. You know, that's where right division comes into play. Understanding prophecy and mystery, 2 Timothy 2.15. And know the purpose of knowing Christ. You know, know your motivation. Know your tools, know the procedures, and know the purpose. Second Timothy three sixteen. All scripture is profitable, or I'm sorry, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. This is our curriculum, so to speak. I would call it. All scriptures, all scripture is profitable. We can find in doctrine, Romans, Paul's epistles, Ephesians, Thessalonians, Romans is our foundation, uh, Romans 4-5 uh, is a good one, I didn't write that down, let's look that one up, Romans 4-5, good foundational verse for us all. I've been trying to memorize scriptures, but when I stand up here, I don't want to mess them up, so I, I still have to, to go to the word. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. That is a cornerstone. That is a foundational passage as we as believers uh, should put in our toolkit. Ephesians, the doctrine and the walk of the church. Thessalonians, the Thessalonian church, they were persecuted. They were going through a lot of problems, being troubled on all sides. What did what doctrines did Paul teach to them? Where they can find hope. Where they can find comfort. At the end of every chapter, it talks about the Lord Jesus Christ coming coming, you know, down for, to them. You know, that can give us comfort and hope. That is a good doctrine. If you want to find reproof, go straight to Corinthians. <laughs> great, So many great examples in, 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 uh, in Corinthians on how we're to be admonished and how we... we uh, have good works uh, under grace, uh, you know, managing our liberty that we have. And then Philippians, and Philippians reproof, teaching us how to esteem others higher than, than ourselves and, and understanding what it means to have the mind of Christ. Correction, we can find that in Galatians, walking in the spirit, not in the law. Not walking according to the works of the flesh, but walking in the spirit. Colossians, it's another great encouraging chapter and uh, one of, for correction as well. But understanding that we are complete in him at being Jesus Christ. And then that last part of 316, instructions in righteousness. We can find that in Timothy and Titus, teaching and leadership and instructions on how to be effective leaders and teachers in God's word. And then finally Philemon. Paul's example for, for charity. And what a good example that teaches us. It's uh, very similar to the prodigal son. But uh, I just thought, I just wanted to take a short period of time, just as it being the new year, just to, to, to help us uh, understand the importance of, of, uh, of studying God's word and that we can know Christ. But there's a, you know, there's a method to it, you know, and then just knowing what our motivation is, you know, is do we make uh, God a priority in our lives? Knowing what our tools are, these are the tools that you can use to help you as you study. Knowing the procedures, uh, this is not an exhaustive list, it's a very uh, short list, but it, hopefully it's one that can help us all get started. Uh, and knowing the purpose, why? To know Christ. To know him and him, say, uh, to know him and him crucified. And I looked this up this morning. And if you look up the word knowledge, in Paul's epistles, the word knowledge shows up thirty-nine times. There's only one other book, one other author, where knowledge shows up 
more than Paul's epistles? Can everybody guess? And if you have, well, oh, I wrote it down on my notes. You guys have, it's Proverbs. Yeah, so I forgot to, I for, yeah, I forgot to email the outline this morning. So you get, I made copies of my own notes for everyone today. But yeah, Proverbs, 42 times you find not the word knowledge in Proverbs. And then the second the, the second one to that is, is, is in all of Paul's epistles. So apparently there's something in his word that he's trying to teach us and tell us is that we need to come to a knowledge. And the only way you can do that is to, to learn it and to study it and make it a part of your life, so make it a priority. So we'll just close in 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Words matter. Study. I think we've just hammered, we've hammered that enough times. To show yourself approved unto who? Yourself. Do you do it for yourself? Do you do it for your friends? Do you do your family to impress other people? No, you do it to be approved unto God. Why? Because we're a workman. That means we have something we need to be doing. Why? And then Paul talks about in his uh, epistles to Timothy... Don't be ashamed. Well, if you don't know something and somebody comes to you and, and has questions, or if they uh, uh, don't believe uh, what you're saying and you cannot make a, a, a good argument against what they, are, what they are saying, especially for the teens, our young children, if we're not teaching them, how are they going to stand up to the, to the halls of academia? Or will they be ashamed when they're asked questions? Study. It starts with study. If you study it, you know it. You won't be ashamed because you will have an answer. You will be approved unto God. You will be a workman. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So let's just close in prayer. Father, just thank you for this opportunity to be here today, to open your word, to study it, to learn it, to let it uh, sit in our minds, Father, and letting us understand it so that we can take it and use what you want us to, to know and be taught. Father, I pray that as for, for, the, for the parents and for the fathers and for the mothers, you know, that we're not scared of this book. We can read it, we can understand it, and we can teach it to our children. They need to know who you are. They need to know what their purpose in life is. They need to know why they are here, and they need to know why uh, they were created in your image, Father, and they need to know everything they can know about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Father. And the only way they're going to know that is for us to teach it to them, Father. So I just pray that this book, as we open it, the words on the page make sense. That as we study it, it changes our hearts and it changes our minds and it changes our, our priorities in life. And that we make you a, a primary focus in all the things that we do and say, Father, to your glory. Amen. All right, today we didn't do communion last week. We do communion the first, every other month we do uh, communion. We weren't able to do it because we didn't have Marie with the piano. We, we thought about trying to do it with YouTube videos, but that just, we just nixed that. So we're going to go ahead and do communion this week. So if the men uh, would like to come forward. Today, we will be looking back to remember Christ and his death on the cross, who we are in Christ, and the common union we have in his body till he come. 1 Corinthians 11.23 For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread.
Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this precious time of reflection on all that Christ did for us at Calvary. As he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. We humbly take this bread and eat it in remembrance of you, for your own dear body was broken for us. May we continue to feed on you by your word and in our hearts by faith and with grateful thanks that we may walk worthy of our calling in Christ Jesus and live a life that is honoring to you according to your will. Amen. And we had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. Father, may we also come to you today in grateful remembrance of what the Lord Jesus Christ achieved on Calvary's cross when he shed his precious blood on the cross to pay the insurmountable price of our sin and became a ransom for all who put their faith and trust in the work that was accomplished at Calvary's cross, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. We share this cup of blessing, remembering how he himself took the cup in the upper room as the hour of his crucifixion drew near and said, This is my blood, which he shed for many. Now we know now for all, as your progressive word teaches us. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do, you, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Amen. All right, I'll help collect the glasses if you want to do the doxology. All right, we're going to do the hymn number 195. I think it's pretty appropriate. Nothing but the blood. I know sometimes we forget how precious the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ was. His blood was pure. It was deity. You know, it's 
God's blood. And um, that was the only thing that could work for God's, you know, justice to accept uh, a sacrifice like that. And uh, I know we're all thankful and we all understand that it is. I think that's the benefit of doing communion is that it helps remind us because, you know, we're pretty good at forgetting stuff, don't we, you know, <laughs> especially as you get older. <laughs> anyway, 195, let's all stand. four verses. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Six twenty five. Finish up. I should know this by heart, right? Number six twenty five. Ducks. Praise God.